This is Ian Brennan reading from my novella, Sister Maple Survives, from a gas station dock in North Italy. Chapter 6. I arrived early to take her to lunch. From outside the doorway, I watched her work for five or ten minutes before she realized I was there. With her long, slender hand, she carved words out of the children's silence. She often made them laugh, and theirs was a chorus of thick, sticky bubblegum laughter. She introduced me to the students. She'd known many of them since they first started at the school as toddlers. One boy, Daniel, refused to shake my hand. He obviously had a crush on Dawn. I could not blame him. Dawn talked at length about her work. She said that it was nearly impossible to lie in their language because they read eyes, movements, and handshakes, not words. She often wondered whether the sounds they imagined were more beautiful than those that existed and if the gift of hearing would prove a disappointment to those who lived their lives in silence. We were late returning to the school. The kids were waiting, troubled by the delay. Dawn was always punctual, so it was me that they blamed. After arriving home, I shut every window in our apartment and hung blankets over them to deaden noise from outside. I plugged my ears with cotton, sat Indian style on the bedroom floor and closed my eyes. I stayed that way for over an hour. I tried to imagine a world without sound. I tried imagining a world without her. I could do neither.